All right, guys, today we are talking about two tiny knives that don't disappoint me. Now, if you are any fan of the channel, you'll know that I generally don't like small fixed blades. And, you know, there's a plethora of reasons as to why I usually end up choosing something like, say, a Victorinox, like this Farmer, over something like a smaller fixed blade. Now, before we talk about what these two knives are, I will talk a little bit about the primary purpose of why you might want to carry one of these fixed blades and why you wouldn't want to carry one of these fixed blades. Now, before we jump into the video as a whole, as always, don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon and Instagram. All the support does mean a ton and helps the channel grow a lot and is very appreciated. Okay, so like I said, generally speaking, when it comes to most general purpose, uh, you know, bushcrafting tasks, I will usually choose something like a Victorinox Farmer, Ranger, um, even a Leatherman Surge, something like that over a smaller fixed blade. And that's primarily due to versatility, where you can see that on this uh, Victorinox Farmer, for instance, you can see that, uh, you know, compacted with, it, with the knife folded, it is a smaller package in this fixed blade, but and when you extend the blade out or when you pull the blade out you can see you can see that it is a larger package you get a larger handle and a larger blade so generally speaking with folders you just get a larger handle larger blade but in a more compact and more easily carryable package but there are some times when so by and large that is what i prefer folding knives slash multi-tools like this guy and in some cases i prefer uh you know multi-tools or multi-bladed knives such as this little guy right here and sometimes i prefer multi-bladed knives like this little guy right here this is the gec pocket carver and as you can see this one actually has three blades uh, one is still in the handle but this pocket carver has three blades and that is a good amount of options for and that's a good amount of option for cutting and carving so oftentimes your folding knives not only are easier to carry but they're also more versatile and more capable than the singular fixed blade also a lot of times especially if we're doing like a knife to knife comparison this is going to be far lighter so there are a plethora of reasons to prefer folders multi-bladed folders uh, multi-tools and stuff like that over a fixed blade however there are some very nice times or very handy times to have a fixed blade and primarily for me when it comes down to having a fixed blade over a folder one of the biggest applications is in skinning having one of these knives either the anza bumblebee or the mora eldris is, is really nice to have a fixed blade for doing up close personal especially if you're doing small game skinning or gutting of animals or just general processing uh, even of other natural materials it can be very handy to have a fixed blade primarily because you don't have a pivot and you don't have any crevices for things like blood or guts or other bodily fluids to enter or to build up or to get stuck in. Also, the field maintenance of folding blades is a little bit more complex. Usually, if you can take apart the tool, it requires other tools to do that. So a fixed blade like this obviously does not have any crevices or small areas for weird things or bodily fluids to hide in so the biggest one is going to be skinning and gutting of game animals fixed blades do excel at that very well and in addition small fixed blades like this are very manageable very um, easy to hold on to and use in those types of circumstances and situations now i will say too another one that can be handy is prolonged and varied carving as mentioned with these fixed or as mentioned with these folders while not directly across the board because some folders do have locking mechanisms it is very nice sometimes to have a fixed blade especially if you're doing very close in carving that requires a lot of back pressure things such as notching more than just strictly like whittling on a stick doing things like notching you're actually putting a lot of pressure on the spine and if you're experienced enough it should be just fine as far as safety for these um, non-locking blades or slip joint blades but Having a fixed blade is undoubtedly safer in that regard because there is no folding mechanism to push the blade back in on your fingers. So there are some applications in those regards 
for having a fixed blade for carving and for processing of natural resources and especially game animals. Now, like I said, those are the reasonings. Now let's talk about the two uh, blades that I really that really do impress me and that I generally choose if I'm going with a smaller fixed blade. So the first one for me, and I think this is actually one of the smallest fixed blades I have, at least as far as blade length goes, and that is the Anza Bumblebee. Now the Bumblebee for me is one of my favorite uh, fixed blades because it still allows me to get a full four fingers on the handle, but has this very, very tiny blade. And I really like that because the very tiny blade allows for precision or precise cutting, and it also allows for a lot of controllability when you can easily choke up onto that blade such as this it allows you to do more types of maneuvers things maybe more like drilling or kind of like carving at an angle to kind of like dish things out it's kind of hard to explain but you know if you've carved spoons and stuff you'll know what I mean because you kind of have to hold your blade and dish things out and dish things out kind of like that so when you have a lot of controllability at the tip of the blade and as the whole of the blade or the width of it uh, kind of like the belly area it allows you to do a lot more work with that blade and so i really like the anza bumblebee for that reason because you can really hold it choke up on it do whatever you need with this blade so that is the first and number one pick. These are not the easiest to find, but the Anza Bumblebee is out there and really any blade with around an inch long blade length and a good amount of handle length, maybe three and a half to four inches of handle is going to perform really well in this regard. Not to mention also the aesthetics to the Bumblebee are just very nice. I really do like the way it looks and like I said, the way it feels is fantastic. Okay, moving on to the Mora Eldris. Now, the Mora Eldris has a lot of the same properties as the Anza Bumblebee that I just mentioned. You know, you can easily choke up on the blade and get right up on it. It has, once again, a right around an inch, inch and a half blade length. So it allows you to, you know, really control it. But at the same time too, the biggest advantage to the Mora Eldris is the fact that this thing weighs about two and a quarter ounces. So it is ultra light. The Anza Bumblebee being a full tang, you know, decently thick blade it is you know a little bit heavier a little bit more chunky and a little bit more robust so it's a little bit more chunky a little bit more robust but the cool thing about the more eldris is it's very thin blade thickness and uh, it's non full tang and highly rubberized plasticized handle make it incredibly lightweight and that is one thing that i try to emphasize quite a bit nowadays that you know a very large barrier to entry to people who don't love knives kind of like myself can really be weight and so if you have a very lightweight knife it means that you might be very inclined to carry it. So that is another additional pro to this blade is the increased carry ability of the knife. And once again too, and once again too, the sheath also very much lends its hand to that. It's very minimalistic, has a nice little strap to lock it in, and overall because this is plastic, it is a very lightweight package overall to carry. So that is an ad additional pro to the Eldris aside from the pros mentioned with the Bumblebee. Now I don't believe, I think the Bumblebee has a slightly smaller cutting edge. Yeah, I think it does. Yep, just barely slightly smaller cutting edge. So it is just a little bit smaller, but realistically these two are about the same size as you can see, and they are both very tiny. Hopefully you can kind of uh, tell by my hands here that they are not very pig knives at all and optimally that is why they are small fixed blades uh, almost pushing into like micro fixed blades but but still completely capable and completely usable for a lot of fine-tuned craft and game processing tasks so anyways guys like i said i'm still not the largest proponent of small fixed blades especially considering the versatility of a lot of folders or multi-tools but they do have their times and they do have their places and like i said you know they don't have any actions or anything to get gummed up or gunked up so that is a big pro to the fixed blades so as always guys hopefully you enjoyed the video god bless and i'm out